we are presented with an opportunity today. As you may well be able to see on the table there, Birmingham City 39 games played, 62 points. Hull City 38 games played, 60 points. We are within touching distance of the team above us in that bottom playoff spot with a game in hand. Our goal difference is significantly worse and we are yet to play Birmingham City for a second time this season. That will be in tomorrow's episode. But today, we start with Aston Villa. So whilst the opportunity is there, and it is in our hands to get into the playoffs this season, if we win every one of our remaining eight games, we will finish inside the top six. But we do have to play first place Aston Villa to begin the day today. We do have to play Birmingham City themselves tomorrow. We also have Aston... Sorry. Also, on top of Aston Villa, we have Brentford and Middlesbrough today. Brentford and Middlesbrough not having the best of seasons. Brentford were, last time I remember seeing them, near the relegation zone, and they are. They're nine points clear now, though, in 19th. And Middlesbrough in 15th, a further nine points clear of Brentford. So there's a definitely a big drop-off at the bottom of the table to uh, those in the mid-table. Fleetwood... The revival continues, but I, I don't quite think it's... Actually, they might already be down. They are 20 point, 21 points. 21 points from safety with 21 points available. <laughs> Fleetwood Town need to win every single game remaining this season and hope that every side above them loses every single game so far this season. Not going to happen. Sorry, Fleetwood. You tried. And fair play for the revival, but it's not going to be enough. Aston Villa's gap at the top has actually shrunk a little bit to 11 points, more so from Leeds picking up form and jumping up uh, a margin above third and fourth and fifth, rather than Aston Villa kind of slowing down in their assault on the title. So the title is still very much in their hands, and second place looks more than likely to be Leeds's now. But there's still time for things to change. I want to start off today's episode as well by uh, by saying I hope you guys had a very happy Christmas yesterday. Uh, this year, more than ever, it's 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 been about who you spent Christmas with rather than what you got under the tree. So rather than telling me what you got as your favourite gift in the comment section down below, let me know who you spent yesterday with and what your favourite moment was from spending the day with those people. That's why I'd be more intrigued to know and I feel would helps help kind of spread some Christmas spirit more so than anything else. We are missing someone for this game. Uh, who is that? Uh, everybody in the starting lineup appears to be there already. So who is it? It's oh, Josh McGuinness must be on international duty or not Josh McGuinness. It's James Scott is on international duty with Scotland as well as Cyrus Christie actually. Cyrus Christie with the Republic of Ireland. So Bayar's still on the bench. Can't try in there for now. But we could put Josh McGuinness there. Right then. Let's go and play top of the table Aston Villa. You can see their starting line up there. It will look exactly the same in game. So I'm not going to dwell on it. We had a rather remarkable game against Aston Villa. Last time we played them. Where we won by three goals to two. I'd love three points again. Grealish. Back to John McGinn. That's a lovely ball into Revan. Pushing forward from left back. Inside to Jack Grealish, Villa coming forward with purpose here. And Grealish nearly scoring a wonderful goal to start the game. That was a brilliant move. He was off balance there when he hit it. And it, had he not had the extra pressure from the defender, he may well have at least found the target there, if not found the very top corner. Thankfully, we had a defender in the proximity that was trying to put him off. That's a nice ball through to Leonardo Pinto. Now, Courtney Howe scored a good header against us last time we played Villa. I'm going to try and drill this across, looking for a delicate. Oh, and it's cannoned off the defender and unfortunately won't cause Emi Martinez any problems. Although, he's caused himself some problems by kicking it out for a corner. If we can score from this, he will look very silly indeed. A delicate gets it. Well, I was going to say gets it under control. He didn't do that at all. Burke, oh, can't find the man through the gap. Now, we might look silly for giving them the ball. Grealish twisting and turning well and spreading the ball beautifully out to Bertrand Troyore, whose touch sets him up really well for a drive at the defence. But Elder, the Australian left back, has done very well all season to keep everybody quiet. And he's done particularly well there again. And hello, Keen Lewis Potter running into a gap in behind an opposition's defence. <gasps> Matty Cash! Where has he come from? 
I was certain we were going to score there. I was just pulling the trigger with Keen Lewis Potter, but the gun jammed because Matty Cash's leg was in the way. And now Wesley's in behind at the other end. Oh, George Long saves. I held my breath there. What a ridiculous start to the game. End-to-end -end stuff here at Villa Park. Jack Grealish whipping the ball in. You'd say that there was, just by the opening half an hour here, that this was like a first versus second scrap for the title, considering the way that both sides are going at each other in these opening stages. Jack Grealish has been so tough to deal with in this first period as well. I cannot cope with his dribbling skills. Here's Vasilev. Gets the ball back to Matty Cash. He and George Long are the reason there haven't been any goals in this game so far. And the Lino is the reason that there won't be any for at least a, f a little moment longer. Doherty into Pinto. Around the corner. Oh, it's loose. <gasps> Yikes! I thought I could get to that. Or at least get close to the ball. Oh, no. Bertrand Traore back to Douglas Luiz. Vasilev leaves it well and there's space here for Grealish. God, I hate playing against Jack Grealish. Vasilev's shot. Again, thanks to the pressure on the Aston Villa man from a defender, the shot isn't as good as it could have been. And we don't run the risk of going behind. Comfortable enough for George Long on that occasion. That's a terrible pass from Keen Lewis Potter looking for Mallet Wilkes. Basically played it behind him. That was not very good at all. This first half, though, has been very good indeed. And hopefully you guys are enjoying this game so far. I'm certainly enjoying playing it. Although I guess if I'd gone 2-0 down, I probably would have had a separate opinion. Here's Bertrand Troy. All right, don't let him get inside on his left foot. He can bend a pass or whip a shot. Matty Cash, Douglas Louise, trying to stop them from creating the first goal of the game so far as time is ticking down here. If we can get rid of this, which we have done now, we will see it out at 0-0 at half time. <sighs> Big 45 coming up though. Pinto. Forward to Wilkes. Just gets there ahead of the defender, but knocked off balance and can't chase after the ball. And Grealish brings it down. And Revan driving forward from left back. Grealish into McGinn. Come in a Rotherham game. I'm not sure who Rotherham are playing. Oh, Carl, if that doesn't bother us. That's not what we're worried about. It's teams like Birmingham City and Reading that we're interested in. Jack Grealish. Oh, he had the opportunity to get it into Wesley there, who was on his own in the box. And he elected not to cross that there with Grealish. And that might well cost his team dear come the end of the game. Wilkes across there to Honeyman. We'll go to Pinto through that gap. And Pinto will use Doherty. And then this space here on the right-hand side for a delicate. And he's got options in the middle. Oh, one of which was Wilkes, who the pass was for. Doherty fighting hard to try and recover the ball. But that's not gone well for either side in the attack there. Here's Jack Grealish. Driving forward again, Reese Burke in the way, but somehow Grealish still just keeps hold of the ball, and he does that so many times. I'd love to have him in my team at some point, because he's such a tricky player to play against. Here's Revan. Oh, he's gotten away from me nicely. And finds Jack Grealish. Deserves a goal or an assist or something for his play so far today, but he's not going to get one. There's still plenty of time left. Four goals. Don't know as... I really want to make any changes at this stage. We've played well, we've defended hard, and we have our clean sheets still at this stage, although the game against Middlesbrough is midweek. So there will be some tired legs if we don't rotate at least a little bit. I'll we'll try and get that in there to Pinto. He'll oh, try to knock it around the corner. It's just not clicked for either side offensively. Not clicked for either side. And in the Steel Derby, it's Wednesday nil. Sorry, Wednesday 2, Sheffield United 2. Manu Chugueros is not long left in the game. Could be a dangerous attack. Why didn't just play that on the floor? I'm not sure. Going for the little dinked pass. Nice interception by Device, but it's fallen back to Aston Villa. There are some changes waiting to be made, but it might be a little bit too little, too late. Especially if we go 1-0 down here now. Bertrand Traore, yes! Elder! He's pleased with himself there. As am I. Really good sliding tackle to ensure that Villa don't take the lead there. Three changes for me. One for them. Revan at left back going off. I've brought on Charlie Barnett. We've brought on Rob Wallace. And we've also brought on... Oh no, get rid, get rid! McLaughlin at the back because Reese uh, Burke was starting to really tire. And thankfully we were as composed as we needed to be there. Here's Doherty. And the run of Wilkes who's now out wide right with Charlie Barnett through the middle. And arriving here, Doherty... 
One more, Barnett. King Lewis Potter over the bar. Literally could have won the game with the last kick, but Keane Lewis Potter, who's been so reliable in such situations so far in his career at Hull City, can't provide us with the final product on this occasion. A hard-fought draw from both sides. Each team deserved a point. Each team deserved some goals as well, but not to worry. Birmingham lost again. We are now within one point of them and a game in hand. Reading lost, so they are still on 59. So they drop two points behind us now, but still within one game's reaching distance of us. Up next for us, midweek is Middlesbrough. And then at the end of the week is Brentford. So this game against Middlesbrough midweek, I imagine, is our game in hand. Because then every other game is at the weekend, other than the ones right at the very end of the season. So Middlesbrough midweek at home, followed by Brentford away. We could end today's episode in a playoff spot. Middlesbrough starting lineup: Stojanovic in goal, Tuba Akpom, a striker that we showed some interest in in the January transfer window up top, alongside Tyrese Campbell, formerly of Stoke. Mokawena, Wing and Morsey, five at the back again. We've seen off the challenge of Aston Villa, the runaway league leaders. Despite a couple of changes, Wilkes to the right-hand side and Barnett up top because uh, Adelica wasn't fully fit. And Bayard in at right-back because Joshua Emmanuel wasn't fully fit. Other than that, we're at full strength here. Honeyman back up to 71 rated. And actually, I think... Oh, I, in the last game, Pinto was 82. I'm not sure what's going on there. I think he was 82 anyway. Honeyman up and growing again, though, which is good news. Pleased to see that. But I'd be more pleased to see goals in the whole City column and none in the Middlesbrough column come 90 minutes. We need a win here. It could move us into the potential playoff position. Johnson played in behind here. And Bayar has gone walkabouts. And Akpom has options. Oh, that's nice. That's really nice. That's better than anything Aston Villa... Provided, oh, that's not necessarily very COVID secure, my man. <laughs> High-fiving uh, fans, but I tell you what, I didn't expect that back heel. And the, the shot was scuffed with barely any pace on it from Morsey. But it just agonisingly bent away from the keeper. That's not how things are supposed to go today. We're supposed to win this game and... Move into sixth spot, right? <laughs> That's what I hoped would happen. Stop it, Middlesbrough. Please. Thank you. Morsey. Through the gap to wing. Johnny Howes, a nice tackle by Elder. And now the defence have pushed forward a little bit. At least their wide men had. Similar to, similarly to the way that mine do. Keen Lewis Potter into Charlie Barnett. Greg Doherty, the man in the box. Oh, Greg Doherty, not the man that's able to pull the trigger. Comfortable enough stop for the defence there. Honeyman chasing shadows at the minute in the midfield. They're running rings around me. Mokawena uh, wide here to Johnson. Back to Mokawena. Oh, I'm worried now. One goal is recoverable. Two might not be. Don't give it away, Chess. Don't give it away. Let's not waste possession. Let's ensure we take our time. Be composed. Build properly. And get ourselves the goal we're looking for. Wilkes into Greg Doherty, who again... He's driving forward from midfield. Pinto. Charlie Barnett's through there. And onto his left. Yo! Just wide. He's done that a number of times. And that's ended up in the back of the net. But just didn't quite get his technique right. Oh, so close. Wing. Forward to Makawena. There's always a man free on either side. This five back really works for Middlesbrough. A number of other teams haven't been able to make it work effectively against us this season. But Middlesbrough are just so good at always having that extra man free. Thankfully, that extra man free at one end means that there's an extra man less at the other. And hopefully, we'll be able to make them pay for that. And we have. And that's a hell of a goal from Greg Doherty. Really well struck. A man who goes under the radar in that midfield. Never really dictates play never really scores a lot of goals or makes a lot of last ditch tackles but 
does pop up with some important moments and that could be a massive one in the grand scheme of our promotion push and our playoff hunt and it's a hell of a fucking goal as well. <laughs> Pick that out. Nice tackle by Honeyman. Oh, I thought at least. Sorry, it's Campbell to Akpom. Nice tackle. Oh, Jesus, every time I tackle him it goes back to a Middlesbrough man. Yes, Jordi Device stepping in strongly. Wilkes quickly forward to Barnett. Going to need to show some good footwork and has done. Wilkes across to Honeyman. Ah, Reading taking the lead is a real pain. They were drawing 1-1 against Stoke at half-time, which was helping us out because we weren't winning here, which we now are. So that nullifies Reading's goal to take the lead there, doesn't it? Fantastic. Leonardo Pinto doesn't score enough, but he's got another one now. And we're in front here. And with the game against Birmingham on the horizon tomorrow... We needed victory, especially with Reading winning too, because they are in a similar position to us as having a game in hand. Wing. Drifted out wide to Johnny Housen. I can't tell you how relieved I am to have taken the lead in this game, especially after seeing Reading take the lead in their game just moments before we did. Such a relief to know that we're finally in front after fighting so hard to get in front against Aston Villa and not being able to do so. We fought really hard to get in front here. And now... Back level again because two Brack has turned that home first time. Well, that's not gone as according to plan, has it? Nice ball in there. Quickly to two Brack Good movement from him. Lovely first time shot. And a brilliant pass through to him as well. Excellent movement from the striker. Perhaps that's what we're missing up top. Perhaps we should have maybe tried to buy someone like two Brack in January. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. We'll find out if by the end of the game. We're able to get this lead back again. I see the run from Greg Doherty again. He's pushing forward well. Charlie Barnett's made a good run. He just can't slow down and turn around in time. My players are making the run. They just don't quite have the quality to see it through. Unlike Middlesbrough's front man. Looking for Greg Doherty again. Charlie Barnett. That's a smart turn. And Pinto's round the corner. And Pinto again. Shot blocked. Johnson brings it down. Wilk somehow brings that back again. Doherty, Charlie Barnett, on his left, shot blocked. Come on, please, trying so hard here. Don't know. Wilkes. Oh, Bayer, I was hoping he was going to rush around the outside. Doherty, Barnett. Jesus, we are encamped on the edge of their box right now, but can't find the shot inside. George Honeyman back in the team. Got an assist in yesterday's episode, but can't get a goal now. Oh, what an interception by device. That was crucial. We might have ended up conceding after all of this pressure on their goal. Charlie Barnett, again, gets past the man. Looking for Wilkes, can't find him. Looking for Doherty, can't find him. Good tackle, legal tackle, but it's just not falling for me in front of their goal at the minute. Took a worldy from Doherty to give us the equaliser. It was a well-worked goal to go in front, but they pegged us back quickly. And now it's turning into an end-to-end -end game like the Villa one. Well, playoff battles are always entertaining. And certainly this one is providing plenty of that. Nice tackle. No foul given. Counter-attack. I might need to recall. Might just call on substitutes soon because people are going to start running out of energy. All this end-to-end -end stuff. Doherty, especially considering this was midweek after the last game. Wilkes is out there. And he's onside him. Alec Wilkes. He'll drop his shoulder. Barnett! Yes! 3-2! I'll be honest, I aimed for the left-hand post. And it's gone top right-hand corner. But it's in and that's all that matters. Oh, I worried a little bit then that he'd spooned it over the bar. Great movement again, backing away, working the space. First time shot, I mean, hell of a shot. I aimed to try and get it near post though, but he smashed that. To be fair, keeper going one way, couldn't get back to it. Almost clipped the underside of the bar there on the way in. Similar reaction from me. Let's go. Oh, let's hold on to this lead. I'm going to make changes. Let's make sure that we do hold on to this lead. Wallace on. Um, I'm going to bring McLa McLaughlin on as well. And actually move Bayer into midfield. Oh, he's not going to get the, a decent rating there. Okay, we won't move Bayer into midfield. Let's simply... Just bring McLaughlin on for Burke. Marvin Johnson. Marvin Johnson with a big switch. There's still time for another twist in the tail. Middlesbrough have proven they are a side that can provide that. Here's Johnson again on the left-hand side. 
Trying to close down with Malik Wilkes. I've overrun it slightly. Wallace. The force Mokawena backwards. Johnson in behind. Onside. Mokawena. Please. All I need to do is just tackle him and get him away from goal. And the referee will blow his whistle. As long as it's not a corner. And out. That'll be three points. That'll be three points. That'll be three points. That'll be a playoff position. We win our game in hand. That's... Probably the biggest result of the season, all things considered, especially considering Stoke scored a second and Reading went and took the lead again. 3-2 in our game, 3-2 in their game, we're in sixth. Reading are now level with Birmingham. Both two points behind us. Cardiff are further two points behind them and Preston too. This is a, at least five-way fight, if not six or seven if you include Sheffield Wednesday and QPR, for that playoff spot. Up next for us, Brentford. Welcome in golf Brentford. Ben Rama back at Brentford. Said Ben Rama. Marcus Force through the middle for them. And Pace on the right hand side. Jensen, Nerdegaard, and Janelt in the middle. I thought Ben Rama was a permanent move to West Ham, to be honest. But apparently, unless they've brought him back, no, it is just a loan. Ah. In real life, it's an initial season long loan with an agreement to make the transfer permanent. In FIFA, the transfer hasn't been made permanent. Brentford still have Saeed Ben Rama in Season 2. And hopefully he doesn't win them this game. Trying to slow him down. Jensen. Nice turn. Just stop the cross. That's what we're trying to do. And Fleming's done well to win it back. Jack Barr on the counter. Look at the run Scott's about to make. Come on, James Scott. You want to stay as a major part of this club and of this team? Do something for me here, please, my friend. Oh, he did well. Just a good save by Balkum, though. And Adelican can't get a goal. Pinto, Jordi, device. That's Janssen. And away for another corner. Oh, Pinto again. Doherty underneath it. Good header. Cleared it away. Cleared it? Yep, that's a word. Cleared away. Jack Barr. Jack. Oh, terrible shot. <laughs> Awful shot from Jack Barr. Device. Through the gap to Doherty. Out wide here is Josh Emmanuel. In the middle is... Scott! You've got to get that on target at the very least. Oh! Instant back to Ben Rama. Thompson down there to Ben Rama again. No, good save, George Long. Get to that first. Oh, he tried everything, Jordi Device. But Brentford lead as we tick over into stoppage time. Oh, it's that, that turn was brilliant. To stop and go again. Oh, to vice. That was a proper, like, John Terry throwing himself at the ball for England scenario, wasn't it? <laughs> Just lunged at the feet of the defender. I may even use that John Terry picture as the thumbnail. Fully committed defending from Jordi Device that, unfortunately, hasn't worked. Brentford 1, Hull City 0 will be how we end the first half. When it so easily could have been... Us that were two goals to the good. And still play continues. Oh, and then I finally make the move forward. And then he blows the whistle. Ben Rama. Oh, how has he gotten past Emmanuel there? Side Ben Rama. There's options. Oh, no. Please get to that Fleming. That's so important. That touch is one of the best things he's done in his whole career so far. He's not had much first team football, Fleming. But that was very, very well done. Otherwise, that's 2-0 Brentford. And arguably game over. Force could find his teammate again hit. And it's Fleming again stepping in at left-back that does the business. Elder has been very good at left-back. But knowing that Fleming can do the business when called upon is very refreshing. Having faith in your backup players is very important as a manager. And knowing I can trust my left-back to do a good job is very important. Leeds take a 2-0 lead against Charlton. Force to Nordegaard. Sorry, Norgard, not Nordegard. Oh, and I fouled him there with Device. Oh, please don't score from here. Please, please don't score from here. Scott's not really been good enough. Barnet on. Adelican's not really been good enough. He, bringing Adelican back in hasn't really worked. He's not been that good. Certainly not had as much of an impact in the championship as he did in League One. I will look to sell him on next year and replace him. Said Ben Rama to take the free kick. For Brentford to maybe sink us this afternoon, but he's missed the target. And there is still hope. 
Doherty. Here's Janelt. He's got options through. Goal in the Birmingham match. Oh, Birmingham have scored. Birmingham with 3 0 up. That's not what we need. That's not what we need. Birmingham 3. Du what? Birmingham 3. Derby 0. Goal difference might well be a big factor at the end of the season. Ours is not good. And it's getting worse. Ivan Tony makes it rent for two. Hull City nil. We do still have Birmingham to play, which could be a saving grace. But then that brings Reading into the question. And into the reckoning for that sixth spot. Because we don't have them to play again. And if they are winning on this match day, then they will take that sixth spot away from us come the end of the season. And we'll finish seventh ahead of Birmingham. We'll finish eighth. If we lose this and then win our all, all of our remaining games, including the one against Birmingham. That ball dinked out to Wilkes there. Doherty in the middle waiting for it. Oh, it's a horrible own goal for Brentford. A horrible own goal for Brentford. Can you believe it? it the camera cut away really quickly, so you didn't actually get to see it properly. But Wilkes lofts the ball in and that's remarkable. Very rarely do we see own goals like that. In fit, it's, he's just not even acknowledged the fact the ball is there. That smacks him on the side of the face. Flown into the back of the net. Charlie Good with an own goal after 74 minutes. Our lifeline returns. Tony. Oh, it's really well spread to side Ben Rama. Cannons off Joshua Emmanuel, who does get there first. Doherty will spread this to Jack Barr. Good touch. Good ball. Pinto. Oh, Malik Wilkes is making the run. I see the man in the middle, but I don't trust the cross. I trust the pass, though. I trust Doherty. Oh, off the bar! No! No! Oh, we could have won the first game with the last kick of the game, and it went over the bar from Keen Lewis Potter. We could have won, or, sorry, equalised in the last game with the last kick of the game against Brentford, but we've hit the bar. Oh, man! That's a point dropped here and pro and two dropped oh, in the first game as well. How did Birmingham and Reading do? Birmingham were 3-0 up last I heard. Birmingham did win 3-0. I don't know what Reading did. We might well be 8th. We're 7th. Reading haven't played yet. Birmingham are a point above us. But we are yet to play them. We play them in the first game of tomorrow's episode. Biggest game of the season so far. Norwich keeps slipping ever closer to us. Let's not let's not forget about them. They're still a factor here. Leeds are putting late pressure on Aston Villa. The gap's still nine points at the top. Sheffield United only six points behind Leeds in that second automatic promotion spot. We've got Burnley. Who have Reading got? Have they got a game in hand against someone? Well, they have got a game in hand. Who's it against? Fleetwood. Typical. So Reading are going to go into 7th, we will drop to 8th and it's Birmingham's goal difference that sees them above us. We have to pray that we can get the results to finish ahead of Birmingham and match the results, if not better than we'll have to better the results of Reading if they win against, when they win against Fleetwood. A right back? Ah, maybe. We'll have to ensure that we win every remaining game and hope that Reading don't do the same. Goalkeeper, six foot three, seventy-one to ninety-four. Sure, I don't know if he's going to be any good. We've got a couple of young goalkeepers already from Germany. Now that's one from uh, Sweden too. But nobody's really any good. Nobody stands out. Blomqvist is sixty rated, and he's just not a right back, is he? He's not a right back. No, I'm sorry. I've got I've got young centre backs already that I want to focus on. He's just not worth keeping hold of. Uh, Schulter has the best potential, supposedly, of everybody else that I have at goalkeeper, despite being lower rated and two years older, which is strange. And Davis, Felix Davis, looks like he could be okay, maybe, if he matches that growth pattern at 15, but there's a long way to go for him. There's still, even with just five games to go, a long way to go in this season. Birmingham, Stoke and Huddersfield tomorrow, and I have a feeling we won't have finished... Uh, or won't be in a position to seal out the uh, position tomorrow and we'll end up having to go to a season finale with Cardiff and Charlton. Oh, dearie me, this is going to go down to the wire, isn't it? Of Reading. 
Fleetwood. Fleetwood 2. Reading 1. They lost. It's still in our hands. What a let off. What a let off. Beat Birmingham to win all five remaining games. Finishing the playoffs. I'll see you tomorrow.